Yep, that's uh, the title of my session. Um, how to not just create progressive web apps in um, your Angular apps, but how to do it uh, in, um, say, semi-automatic way. And um, this is um, our goal for today. Um, how do we do it natively and naturally? Of course, in terms of uh, Angular framework, using all these, uh, say, methodologies, <coughs> approaches, and uh, uh, features of uh, Angular. By the way, how much time do I have? How much do you need? Like 20 minutes? I can talk about uh, PWA in Angular for a couple of hours. I'm joking. So let's, keep like yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's, let's be very, uh, very efficient today. And uh, I believe uh, I will use uh, 30 minutes and uh, some questions uh, from, from you after all. Uh, yeah, I was already uh, introduced. What could be useful uh, from from this slide for you is uh, my Twitter handle, WebMaxRU. I post all the latest and uh, greatest uh, stuff about Angular and about progressive web apps. So like 99% of my tweet, tweets are about this stuff. And also NGVikings conference, I'll double check, uh, but most likely I have um, stickers uh, with this uh, Vikings uh, Heads and uh, many more different stickers. I will put them uh, here right after my session. Okay. Uh, so after all, what is progressive web app? Uh, recently, I stopped using um, uh, information from uh, Wikipedia uh, about uh, this definition. Why? Because uh, I took part in creating uh, another definition uh, together with folks from Mozilla Developer Network. And by the way, Mozilla Developer, Developer Network is the best source of uh, all technical documentation about um, the web and uh, PWA in particular. Uh, so what is it? Uh, these are just applications that use the latest modern uh, APIs from modern browsers. Um, and they're cross-platform, right? And Word progressive is just about progressive enhancement, no more, no less. So it's not uh, like forward-looking uh, apps. Of course they are, but uh, the key point to have uh, word progressive is um, to enhance the app, right? No, so we, in most cases, we cannot say rely on uh, all these uh, nice and m new features. Why? Because we have um, some legacy browsers, like right? Uh, why do we do this? Uh, all this, uh, say not complex, but, but still n new stuff. Uh, first, the, our applications uh, should work everywhere, on uh, every browser, every platform, um, like literally everywhere. And um, of course, of course, uh, it's all about our users, our ca clients, our customers. We want to give them um, the features, the possibilities the uh, web never had before. Um, that was a privilege only for native um, say mobile applications. Uh, before we dive into the Angular uh, PWA, let's, uh, let me give a short uh, overview of what's going on uh, in this uh, cross-platform uh, point of view. Um, yeah, let's start from the browser. It, about web after all, right? We are talking about progressive web applications and uh, they all um, came from from the browser. Uh, platform uh, which was uh, igniter for the whole idea. Why uh, our mobile apps, uh, say, were starting point for this um, concept in general? Um, two factors. First, um, mobile applications, uh, mo uh, sorry, mobile devices compared to our um, laptops, desktops, uh, less powerful, right? Um, despite uh, like uh, modern um, phone is more powerful than uh, computer that um, sent a rocket to the moon, um, it's still a bit less powerful than um, your desktop, right? Um, and uh, connectivity is not uh, always perfect on our mobile phones, so we are quite often on uh, cellular networks, not 
always on Wi-Fi and uh, maybe uh, no connection at all and especially in known case uh, so-called Wi-Fi, right? When you have uh, indicator that hey there is a Wi-Fi but in reality no. <laughs> um, desktops, yeah we quite often uh, forget about uh, this kind of platform uh, while we talk about progressive web apps. Uh, but also we can optimize lots of interesting um, things on um, uh, our laptops. Okay, so uh, let's list some logotypes. And uh, by the way, this slide um, is a bit outdated, maybe maybe five days old. And uh, we can, yeah, uh, everything in PWA is happening right here, right now. And uh, uh, latest news uh, appear like literally each minute. Uh, so now we can move edge logotype to the left hand side for, for you. Uh, why? Because uh, recently they released the version uh, 17, <coughs> as I remember, or in their library version number 17, uh, which supports uh, service workers. We are not talking about like full support of all features by all these browsers, but uh, the basic stuff are already in production in all major browsers, and this is really cool. Uh, mobile. I'm super happy to say that both main platforms are there, Android and iOS. And desktop, uh, Microsoft are uh, pioneers here. Um, they already have uh, progressive web apps as first class citizens on their Windows 10 platform. So you don't need uh, Electron anymore to wrap your web app to uh, run it natively. They, they wrap it into their um, native uh, format standard uh, under the hood, so you don't care about this. And uh, on the right hand side is a uh, logotype of Chrome, but not browser, but operating system. Um, at least uh, one week ago, um, it was on Canary channel, they also have this uh, um, channel like, like in browser called Canary for us, for developers, to test uh, the latest stuff. Maybe now it's already in production, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe Rob has uh, updates. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> you, know, you see, it, ha it happens on our eyes. Um, you see, we have one more line here, right? And uh, I really want to list one more place related to progressive web apps, uh, but it's not place where we run these apps, but how we distribute these apps, right? And uh, it variety of um, app stores. Uh, again, um, Microsoft uh, is pioneering here and uh, you can uh, have your web, your progressive web application uh, in uh, Microsoft Store uh, right here and uh, right now. My next uh, uh, two or three slides are about this and uh, maybe, maybe on this week we'll have some news about Google Play. At least I'm personally really waiting for, for this, how to streamline the process, how we push our PWAs to Google Store. Now you can do it in a bit hacky way because uh, when you install your PWA on your Android device, uh, under the hood again, it's converted to APK, like native uh, Android format, and you can, uh, using some tools, take this APK and uh, push it to um, App Store, uh, to, to Google Play, but um, let's hope for the best. And uh, this slide is uh, maybe 30 minutes old and uh, this is uh, last session from uh, today's MS build uh, uh, I'm um, proud attendee of this uh, conference and um, uh, this is Jeff uh, from uh, Microsoft from uh, Microsoft Edge team uh, the guy behind the uh, PWA builder and uh, after all uh, we got uh, uh, yeah unfortunately uh, it's not uh, readable but uh, I will tell you the, the basics right how to have your progressive web application in uh, Microsoft Store. In There are two options. So this one is fully automatic. And uh, summary, just create a nice progressive web apps, following some uh, criteria like uh, nicely formatted uh, manifest uh, service worker, which um, gives you a possibility to run offline. And uh, like small points like 
does not sell digital goods, uh, no adult content, and no offensive content, like uh, pretty obvious uh, requirements. And uh, just wait, uh, sooner or later, Bing, this logotype um, crawler from uh, Microsoft, will find your app and put it into the store. Uh, or you can do it by hand. Uh, use uh, PWA Builder, it's an um, online utility and also it goes in the form of uh, CLI if you like it more. Um, you can, again, um, feed the URL of your PWA and it generates uh, what is called um, a uh, PPX or, or so, like native format for Microsoft Store, so you can go and uh, put it there by, by hand. Uh, why to do it at all? Um, Many points. Uh, let's list the main ones. For, main ones. For example, you can uh, get your. Uh, so first, uh, not not even listed here. Uh, just imagine one day you wake up and uh, uh, for some reasons you see that uh, your app got 1,000 or 10,000 more new users. What happened? It just was published uh, implicitly by by Bing crawler to Microsoft Store, and uh, you. You should be happy, right? So if, if this is a public application, not uh, not a private one, but but uh, you forgot to hide it before some some password. Of course, you can uh, um, you can claim this app and you can uh, request to remove it from um, App Store, but but in general, it will happen automatically, right? Um, uh, then you can. Uh, get some feedback like on any app store about your app you can um, get some analytics about so, how many people download it from from this app store and uh, also you have a couple of really interesting technical aspects of this uh, for example um, um, yeah let's let's jump um, uh, a couple of steps ahead uh, when you cache when you put some data offline um, it, uh, for for later use in offline uh, using service worker, there are some limitations in uh, in the browser, which is obvious, right? Uh, you don't want to overload your user with megabytes of um, some, some some data, right? Uh, there is no reason to put a movie into the cache and don't even try. Uh, but here. In general, that's possible. I, I had a chat with uh, Jeff after his session, and uh, like he mentioned that the limit, uh, if you go this way and use uh, PWA as a native Microsoft app, is uh, like 80% of your uh, active uh, hard drive or, or, or so. So it practically limits, right? Um, yeah, and uh, you can access all uh, Windows, all Microsoft APIs which is uh, like good and bad, right? I've seen some code uh, in Progressive Web Apps that using uh, proprietary uh, Windows APIs and it doesn't look like, um, like Progressive Web App, right? So uh, the goal of Progressive Web App is to use um, latest features uh, of uh, platform, but in the way not to think about which platform is it, right? We have about cross-platform, so um, I'm not. I'm, I was not happy with um, the code I've seen, but but let's wait. This is this is really uh, really young uh, concept, and uh, I believe sooner or later all browser vendors will agree on some uh, on some common APIs for some common things. Okay. Uh, just super quick that all this uh, awesomeness on uh, the table we had about cross-platform happened uh, literally during last month. So first uh, iOS introduced support in production version, uh, then a uh, tweet um, by Simone about uh, experimental mode of Windows Store uh, when they started to grab your apps into this. Uh, for now, like only dozen of apps published, including, for example, uh, Skyscanner, uh, Twitter, Quite, quite popular apps, right? And uh, something that hopefully will go to production tomorrow, it's about uh, Chrome uh, Canary, so we'll have uh, PWAs as first class citizens on second platform on uh, our laptops, in addition to Windows. Uh, super short, uh, why do we need it uh, in terms of uh, user um, 
advantage uh, to how to how do we make our users and clients happy so uh, obviously all everything connected with networking working uh, offline and optimizing lots of stuff uh, in online and um, it makes us, us think about web that uh, about something not relate, related to online anymore right so let's uh, let's forget that uh, web is about uh, when we connected to the internet and we um, surf some some websites no web is not about this anymore so web is a full scale um, platform to create our apps really uh, why not to use all the power of, of uh, JavaScript, uh, yeah, the, there are many, many uh, opinions about uh, JavaScript, especially from the side of uh, the backend guys. But still, it's it's really great language to create apps. It's super uh, um, eloquent, uh, laconic, uh, flexible. Uh, so why not to use this power and power of uh, modern browsers APIs, right? Um, so um, let's uh, forget about um, web in online context and if we online um, why not to keep a user notified even when um, our app is not running in foreground and uh, maybe even tab is closed and maybe even browser is closed but not, not unloaded from memory but still um, having notifications for the web like we like the ones we have for our mobile phones is a really big deal and uh, something that um, was never available on the web before. And in addition, uh, after all, in some cases, you might want to still have uh, something on your mobile phone installed like an app, despite uh, one of ideas behind Progressive Web App um, is to get rid of any kind of stores, right? Why do we need all this uh, extra layer of complexity between you, publisher, and uh, your your customer? Uh, why to go to App Store when we can go to the uh, search line? Uh, we um, all used to this, and we like um, use it without any any hassle, right? Uh, and uh, so. Progressive web apps, like regular websites, uh, could be easily found there and uh, installed from this. Um, yes, and uh, there is actually active discussion going on, again, uh, right here, right now, our days, uh, about how to uh, in install these apps properly, right? Uh, the current solution is, uh, at least in Chrome browser and uh, in Firefox, as I remember, after say second visit of your user to your progressive web app to your website and uh, of, of course it if uh, it's real pwa if it has a manifest and service worker the browser will offer um, this install prompt opt automatically uh, but there are pros and cons uh, first uh, this uh, automatic prompt quite disruptive so it, it can uh, especially on mobile device it can like take uh, half of your screen with just a question would you like to install this uh, app to your home screen and um, yeah you, you could be embarrassed by this right um, on the other hand if it will be some subtle button uh, no one will notice this at all right uh, another branch of this discussion is uh, to give or not to give the developers to show this system dialogue, system prompt uh, explicitly in their course. Because now you don't have control over this. Uh, I mean, you, you can uh, suppress this message, but you cannot evo invoke this from, from your course. You have to wait this uh, heuristics, like uh, two visits uh, with uh, kind of 15 uh, minutes uh, before this uh, visit. So it's quite, it's quite complex to... Um, test right okay so it was about proper app experience uh, now let's go back to the technical part um, all these uh, three um, big pieces of PWA and lots lots of more magic powered by service worker API and um, making app installable is controlled by a super simple JSON file with some meta information about your app which is following web app manifest specification before we uh, finally uh, dive into Angular, uh, let me promote one Slack team I organized uh, maybe one year ago, but it's quite popular at the moment. Um, 
it's all dedicated to Progressive App, like, like it follows from it, its name, it's open, so if you open this um, URL, um, you'll be prompted to enter your uh, credentials uh, to, to register for this uh, Slack team, and uh, you're welcome to ask your questions, share your experience, share your knowledge, and chat about PWAs. Okay, uh, we are in Angular mode now. Right, and Angular is a modern framework. Of course, it uh, adopts, it embraces all this new uh, modern web stuff. And um, so, Angular app is a JavaScript uh, client-side app, after all, right? In in, uh, in its simplest form, right? So of course, we have server render it and uh, elements, but in general, this is JavaScript application. So um, we have all the available options to add the PWA features. For example, we can go and code our service worker by hands. Absolutely no problem um, on words, right? But if you try to do it uh, in, in reality, you will uh, face, you will hit so many um, issues. Uh, there are so many pitfalls, so many edge cases, uh, so many everything that sooner or later you will give up. Just, just promise me. Or you will uh, have just uh, just simplest proof of concept of progressive web app, not, say, not, not so f fun to have it in production. This is why there are some, uh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, this is why there are some libraries to help you to automate all these um, features. Uh, for example, who can uh, tell me the name of, uh, of this logo type? Yes, you are right. This is Workbox. Uh, this is a PWA automation library from uh, from Googlers, and this is, uh, say, uh, son of uh, previous version of this um, toolkit called the SW Precache. Maybe you heard about this uh, um, with uh, its older name. But we are here tomorrow to talk about a different way how to make it even more natural for your Angular app and this way called Angular Service Worker or um, NGSW as a shortening, right? Uh, a bit of history. So a long time ago, it all started in 2016, uh, we had this switch for um, our Angular CLI called uh, Mobile. It was really, really... Um, old era in terms of uh, speed of um, uh, front-end uh, development, right? And it was called Angular Mobile Toolkit. So it was just kind of experiment, right? Uh, yesterday, uh, and uh, I believe for most of you it's still today, because uh, I'm talking about uh, Angular 5 and Angular CLI 1.7 uh, point something. Uh, I believe uh, not everyone upgraded uh, their apps to version 6, right? So raise your hand who is on version 6 in production. <laughs> yeah, you see, even, even, even Europe is not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but still, um, like literally, this is yesterday, right? Because uh, now we have uh, version 6 uh, stable and in production. Uh, we had uh, another switch called uh, Service Worker, and uh, we could use it when we scaffold new app. It was applic applicable and still applicable to these versions of uh, CLI and Service Worker. Okay, uh, how we do it today? And uh, it's a bit different, right? Uh, so first, we create uh, Angular app without any any flag, like like we do it in regular. But then. We add this possibility using new command exposed by Angular CLI 6 called ng-add. And this is uh, really good, right? Because we can uh, use this command not only to scaffold a new app, right? Uh, we don't have a privilege to start a new Angular app every time, right? Uh, in most cases, we support some, um, some, some legacy, some, some existing app. But using this command, if, of course, if you upgrade it, after all, to version 6, you just uh, run this command and um, bam, it's automatically uh, ready for you. So we have to use CLI 6. Uh, we'll have Angular Service Worker 6. 
In addition, uh, we'll have some smart defaults for web app manifests. So this tiny JSON I mentioned to create our app installable, so create our app as app. And my next question uh, is, um, which new feature of um, Angular CLI, uh, I think, we use in, uh, common, uh, in commons like, uh, like ng-add? Uh, so you, you can add not only service worker, but many, many other interesting things. And which concept of Angular, uh, Angular framework do we use for this? How that's called? Schematic yes. Material. Absolutely. It's uh, schematic. So this is a new generalized way to do some, uh, some say, file operations on your existing project. And um, this, is, this is really cool that uh, the folks from Angular team um, made this uh, real and uh, it's super help helpful not only for them but for us as well so we can uh, create our own say starter kits uh, all these modifications in much simpler way than than before and I believe it it's really general right it maybe not applicable uh, to specifically to angular maybe you can use schematics for for any framework right uh, at, at, at least uh, like why why not why, why not? Okay, um, we added some feature. Uh, so you see now it's called uh, not service worker but PWA because we add the web app manifest in addition to service worker. Um, again, more generalized is better. Now it's time to build our app. If we run production build, uh, we'll notice some um, extra files in our dist folder. And uh, by the way, it's uh, already uh, outdated because now it's not just dist folder, but dist your project name because uh, CLI 6 supports uh, multiple projects and they all listed um, in dist folder uh, under their their name. So it will be, in my case, this will be dist uh, my PWA slash and all these files. Uh, two moments here. Um, first, the build should be production. This, uh, all um, service worker features will not work in um, development uh, builds. And second, uh, when we go to, to test it, so in your browser, you, um, after you run it, uh, you will notice that service worker is registered. By the way, uh, application tab is your helper in um, all these um, explorations of your progressive app. And uh, you can um, easily go and uh, switch off your internet connection, like mimic this uh, using an offline checkbox in network um, tab and your application will work like like before, uh, like um, uh, it has internet thanks to some magic behind Angular Service Worker. Um, so my second hint here is uh, you have to serve this not using ng serve command, not this uh, nice uh, um, command for us for developers to um, instantly uh, show something for for us. Um, it's ng serve is too smart, so it, it does too many op optimizations and uh, it uh, drives service workers uh, crazy. <laughs> uh, yes, really. Uh, so you just uh, start any simplest uh, static HTTP server and uh, and test it like like this. So build production mode and uh, start a server. Uh, my next hint, which is uh, market number one for some reason, is uh, to check the state of uh, Angular service worker. Um, this virtual URL uh, will be registered for you if you run uh, your app with service worker and uh, you'll get some uh, technical information about what's going on there. Um, all these uh, calculated hashes and uh, status of uh, Angular service worker um, will definitely not go through this um, uh, in details, uh, but uh, this one could be quite useful for you if something went wrong, uh, which might happen sometimes. Uh, what happening in your um, app module after you run this uh, ng add uh, angular pwa is quite simple uh, again you remember we are talking about natural way to add the pwa features to our angular app so this is absolutely an angular way to uh, say add some functionality which import service worker module um, we 
import this uh, in import section of um, ng module uh, the only like smart thing here if is uh, again we do it only for production mode this is why we import um, environment um, and next uh, so how this magic happens so you just uh, did the build and uh, you started your app once and uh, you switched off internet and it still works what happened under the hood quite easy uh, angular service worker just took all your files all say all, all needed files for the app and uh, put it to some special place in your browser called uh, cache um, and uh, in offline mode it serves it from from there uh, there is um, quite often happening confusion between uh, this cache uh, used by service worker and the regular um, HTTP cache. So despite uh, they both called cache, maybe not uh, perfect wording, right? Uh, they are totally, totally different. So uh, if we are talking about HTTP cache, this is something we can only hope on. So uh, if a browser uh, cached some uh, resources for us, like uh, image, so maybe we are happy and uh, our index HTML cached and the uh, user will see it um, in offline but this is something we cannot rely on right uh, but cache which uh, is uh, controlled by service worker is a uh, different one we have full control on this uh, database like um, structure so it looks like data database but with uh, two simple um, um, like fields uh, request response so specifically to um, maintain uh, what uh, we get from the network. Uh, so how Angular Service Worker understood what exactly to put there? Um, well, um, it's it's not so s smart yet to understand it uh, without any uh, hints, right? This is why we have configuration file. Uh, but but uh, even uh, say, uh, default view of this file uh, which you will get after ng add command is smart enough to put at least some uh, some critical resources to run your app uh, in offline so uh, both uh, settings file for angular service worker and the web amp app manifest are uh, doing their best to have a smart default so you literally do do nothing can get at least something uh, I believe uh, we will skip all this uh, syntax uh, part of uh, my slides because uh, um, luckily um, we have quite nice documentation at Angular IO at the moment. Uh, maybe I will only tell about totally different uh, groups of uh, resources we want to feed to our Angular service worker for um, to let it know uh, to understand how to behave uh, um, network-wise, right? So asset groups, it's all about specific uh, built version of uh, our app. So we uh, say change some fi files, like um, updated our logotype, fixed uh, some bugs, introduced new, new bugs, uh, like always did the uh, ng build dash dash prod, bam, new version is ready and uh, Angular Service Worker is doing its best to maintain these versions, right? So to um, wipe the old one, to cache a new one when needed, and so on. Uh, contrary, data groups is also about uh, network resources, uh, but uh, the ones which are not part of uh, our app itself. It's not part of what we call application shell, what we want to put into the cache and use it for um, offline uh, mode like implicitly and uh, who can imagine what kind of uh, resources uh, we have in, in data group so which part of our application um, should be uh, cached using this credential uh, I would not like to <laughs> cache credentials because uh, this cache is pretty open <laughs> no, never do this <laughs> but uh, <laughs> But uh, yes, so, so let, uh, let, let's think logically, which, uh, which data our application uh, consumes. Okay, we started some... Categories, the lookups, 
these are probably the best candidates to be put in there unless they, they're too dynamic. So everything that's query alike will be changed on pretty much every request and any user action, so you don't want to put it there. Yeah, good. Uh, practical. You can't I, I the, the I'd generalize your answer. So all API requests go to this group. So all our data, all, all our app uses somehow, but uh, it's not part of the app, right? So uh, most likely uh, we don't want to go through all, say, say uh, catalog slash, uh, sl API slash catalog slash uh, category slash uh, one and brrr, from one to thousand. Uh, most likely we don't want to put them into asset groups, right? Because it's not part of our application shell. So this part goes there. Uh, as uh, I mentioned, let's keep all this, uh, uh, say, theory parts of uh, how we exactly specify these uh, resources. And uh, let me scroll to the, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, one second about this one. Uh, when we cache data groups, we have some strategies. We have freshness, it, uh, may, it means that Angular uh, will go to check uh, this URL, uh, real one on the network if uh, it's updated and if yes, it will serve it uh, from, from there. Uh, if uh, network is not available, we are offline, we'll try to get it from, from cache if we have there, right? So in my example, this is uh, relevant, for, relevant for API breaking news. Most likely we want to go to check if something new there. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, we might uh, have some um, URLs like uh, archive ones, right? Uh, and if our user visited some, uh, uh, for example, news from 80s, most likely they are not updated uh, today. This is why we can use different strategy called performance. Uh, it means that Angular will go to check cache first, and if it's not cached, we'll try to go to the network if it's available. Uh, and interesting hint, uh, say quite uh, non, not so obvious. Uh, our API is evolving uh, like our app, right? And uh, we could change, for for example, the format of uh, JSON we uh, return. And uh, okay, we um, did good job. We updated our backend part. We updated and deployed fresh version of uh, our Angular app. Uh, but since data groups are not part of this um, asset group, so it's not managed by uh, Angular service worker in terms of version, uh, it might happen that we have older format of JSON cached. And uh, most likely we'll have a console log full of uh, errors in this case. Uh, but uh, luckily we have a uh, good uh, mechanism to avoid this. We can pass uh, what we call version into data groups as well. And if we change it, Angular will just ignore uh, what it cached before and we'll try to go to the network for the new data. Okay, for a moment, let's uh, go back to app shell, um, to what we cache using asset groups, which is version of our app. Um, so. What, uh, so uh, let's imagine, uh, we created the first version of our app, we deployed it on server, the browser will show us version one, obviously, right, first visit. Next, we uh, did some updates, deployed version two, what will show the browser for the first visit? Version one, why? Because it's uh, trying its best to serve this content immediately and take it from the cache, from this uh, special cache, uh, cache I mentioned. And um, only on the second, say reload, it will show the new version. Why? Because uh, at the same time, while it's showing the data, it goes to network and check if the version updated. And if yes, uh, under the hood, in the background, it. Uh, again, uh, doing a great job to uh, maintain the version in the cache. But what can we do here, uh, at least to maybe after one second, after Angular Service Worker understood that there is a newer version available, maybe we could uh, give a user a hint um, that, um, hey, uh, there is a new version. I believe you all seen this, uh, say, UX pattern on uh, many uh, modern websites when you open it and uh, after a second or two 
some uh, message appears of like toast or snack bar. Hey, there is a new version available. Would you like to refresh? And uh, you might want even be com confused, right? So why to refresh? Because I just opened this website. So it means uh, only uh, three things: that uh, this uh, website is powered by Service Worker, and um, newer version is uh, available, and uh, you get the version you see now immediately from cache, not from network. Uh, yes, we can improve it and we can show this message using Angular style uh, of uh, doing things. Uh, we import class SW update, we inject it using dependency injection, absolutely Angular way, and uh, we listen to um, property called available of uh, SW update and uh, which concept do we use here, like when we subscribe, listen to, how that's called? Observable. Observable, exactly. And um, there are many, many observables in uh, like critical parts of Angular framework, right? So it's absolutely native to it. So it's in uh, HTTP, in a router, in forms, maybe somewhere, some, somewhere else. So yeah, observables are definitely um, powering Angular, I'd say. And then we'll see something like this. So version three, we hit reload. We got this message, refresh, and version four. Uh, it's still trade-off. It still, uh, for me, uh, uh, breaks the web idea in general that uh, web should be always fresh. Um, but but this is this is mm, how PWA um, works um, in. Um, in, in general, so maybe there will be more interesting UX, uh, say, solutions for for this kind of problem. But uh, now we have what we have. Uh, uh, push notifications are so simple to implement that uh, I will spend only 30 seconds on uh, on this part. Despite the concept uh, and APIs behind push notifications are quite complex, right? Uh, but Angular Service Worker uh, does a really great job to simplify everything uh, really to the ground. Uh, first, we uh, subscribe to the, these notifications. We use uh, SW push class. Uh, again, dependency injection, and again, um, um, method exposed by SW push called request subscription. Or you can do it totally in, uh, uh, say, in regular vanilla JavaScript. So this is just a helper for you. So this is about subscription, and it will uh, invoke this uh, system dialog. Uh, this uh, website uh, wants to send you uh, notifications. Uh, to send uh, notifications, you literally have to do nothing on your or on your um, uh, client side on your Angular app. You uh, have to just follow the simplest convention on your backend. So backend is uh, absolutely a required part for your um, uh, push web, web push notifications uh, sending process. So you have just to wrap all your data into field called notification, and that's. It. Angular Service Worker is smart enough to understand what's uh, going on uh, and uh, it will uh, entertain you with lots of uh, push notifications uh, if you wish of course. So just don't uh, don't uh, misuse this, don't overuse this <laughs> nice, nice feature because push notifications could be new pop-ups. And um, I, I have uh, one interesting uh, story about kill switch, about how to deal with the things when something went wrong, but I will uh, keep it for you, for your homework to explore how this works, and I will only list what we just went through. We generate app shell, we uh, optimize networking by runtime caching, we have super simple push notifications and smart update flow. Um, and um, in addition to all these nice uh, features of Angular Service Worker, we do it everything in uh, Angular way. Uh, imports, observables, uh, dependency injections, uh, methods, classes, so Angular and JavaScript. Uh, thank you very much. Tim, thank you so much, guys. Do you have any questions to him? Just keep it short. Yes. Like uh, <laughs> try to keep it short. So I've got 
two, but they're really short. So the first one is, are cache quotas dis discoverable? Do I know in advance how much can I store there or not programmatically? Yes, yes. Uh, there is a special API called uh, Storage Estimate API, and, and, and okay, you can so, use it. So there is a way to yes, absolutely. Come that ten step. Second one is testing. Can I imitate network outage to protractor to test my PWA, or I'm basically screwed up and just have to rely on manual testing process? Which is I'm not sure. I'm not sure about protractor, but testing is is complex in in these terms uh, because uh, yeah, you have to mimic totally different environment. Uh, what I can say that there is a interesting library from um, a company Pinterest. Uh, so they also serious contributors to PWA um, called uh, I don't remember how it's called, uh, but but uh, you you can easily find this like Pinterest uh, PWA testing. So they use Node.js to mimic this environment. Um, not not all features are available, but you can test at least the crucial ones. Thank you. You're welcome. So if I have a database-driven application, will your um, will doing it in this way let you keep your all of your database info on your client's machine then, or is that also a bad idea? Uh, there is no one size fits all, so you you have to. You, you have to find your own solution, but uh, so you have all the tools. Um, you can, uh, for example, cache uh, some some limited number of uh, responses. For example, you cache the latest ten and the wipe <coughs> everything else. And again, using uh, Angular Service Worker is just passing this uh, how I, I don't remember like limit uh, or max max uh, entries something like this. Um, Yes, yeah, so it's 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 up to you. Uh, really, you have to you have to think uh, to find a balance between uh, full uh, of some megabytes cache on your customer's machine and about uh, absence of offline experience. Okay, thank you, um, guys. I think.